Welcome to the New Grounds Podcast. Today's episode hosted by Ninja Muffin and Psycho Goldfish. What's up, y'all? This is the NGP. This is the NGP podcast, New Grounds podcast. We got special guest Mike Welsh. Hello. Yes, and we got co-host. Who's, who's the co-host? Hello, it's Psycho Goldfish. <laughs> yes, Psycho Goldfish, and it's the other me co-host, Ninja Muffin ninety nine. And we got Mike Welsh in the house. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Mike R. Welsh. Mike Michael R. Welsh, the let's see, ex Newgrounds employee, current employee at the Behemoth, working on Ruffle, did P collage programming. He's he's been all over the place. Flash Doom. He's been he's everywhere. Okay, he's a programming <laughs> guy. How's it going? Here, let's get you did you did Pico collage, Mike. How is how did that happen? Um. So originally, I did the first P collage in 2015, and uh septastic organized that and she reached out to me um and that was a lot of fun yeah uh that was that was released for pico day in 2015 and for this one bill primo reached out to me maybe i guess it was the beginning of this year and so i threw that together over the past week or two uh, a couple sleepless nights but it turned out real good i think what was it like getting picolage to work on uh apple devices oh gosh <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bring that up in every programmer talk because it's like <laughs> the worst. Yeah, I don't know. I know you were both programmers, but just getting stuff working on the web in general is such a nightmare. Um, yeah. You know, testing across different browsers, devices. Uh, you know, Safari is always the odd one out, at least right now. On iOS, it's hard to even autoplay any sounds. So it took some work to just get the music playing. But I think it's all working now. Yeah, the moral here is if you if you really want the web to be a great place, y'all need to stop using Apple products. That's basically that's, basically that's the lesson. Yeah, it all uh, runs in WebGL, and of course, Apple only supports WebGL one, doesn't support WebGL two, so yeah. that makes life more difficult. You know, all kinds of stuff like that that makes you miss Flash. You know, <laughs> the good old days. WebGL. Uh, what is WebGL? Quickly, is, uh, what do those words mean? Uh, it's just a graphics API for 3D graphics in your web browser. So yeah, yeah. you can make a 3D game using it. Um, I'm just using it to make a flat picture, but it makes it run nice and smooth. What a lot of people don't understand about it, it's basically it's a 3D uh, rendering library, but it's used for pretty much everything 2D. Um, the whole point is uh, when it renders things, it makes like flat rectangles, puts pictures on them, and moves them like it's flat. But... The power comes from the fact that you can use your GPU to render it, not your CPU. So that's the nerd version. Yeah, yeah. There is picolage. Uh, this picolage for uh, to get more into the technical weirdo questions. This one was made in like Rust or whatever, right? That's like WebAssembly and all that, all that fancy stuff that you've been digging into <laughs> in the past like few years. Is that? Yeah, lots, lots of fancy stuff going going on there. Um, <laughs> Over the past couple of years, I, I've been playing around with Rust. It's a new, newer programming language. And mainly I started learning it just to do something new. And Rust has a lot of kind of new ideas that were interesting to me. Um, yeah. And, you know, my day job at the PMYTH, I program mostly in C++ and, you know, get tired of C++ over the years. So it's nice to try something new, sort of keep my knowledge up to date. So that's why I've been playing with Rust. Um and yeah, the Picolage is programmed in Rust, and it gets compiled to WebAssembly, which is uh, WebAssembly is a newer compiled language that can run in the browser, as opposed to JavaScript, where you can view the source and see the source code right there. Yeah. WebAssembly is actually compiled and uh, can have some better performance and things like that. So that's been fun. Um, it honestly makes my life a little bit more difficult. I'm not sure I would recommend <laughs> it for, uh, you know, especially if I'm just trying to crank something out in a week or so, it's uh, a little hard to iterate. You know, Rust is kind of a strict language, and oh, I see, I you know, see, makes, makes life difficult sometimes. But it's it's been fun to learn and fun to try. It's definitely something new and unique. 
Yeah. And it lets you avoid learning JavaScript even longer. Absolutely. Yeah, Yeah, (laughs) because at least for me, JavaScript is actually more difficult because there's, it seems like there are so many different ways to do things. Yeah, it's anarchy. I'm not sure ever like what the best way is. There, there is no best way, man. There is no best way. <laughs> so using a stricter language like Rust or, or Hacks, I've used a lot too, is, you know, it, it seems more straightforward to do what you want to do as opposed to me having the Google on Stack Overflow, you know, like how the hell do I do this in JavaScript? What's the right way to do this? Yeah. And what was the, what was the old Picolage? Was that like JavaScript or what? Like Hacks or what? Uh, that was Hacks. That oh. was in Ooh. Hacks, compiled to JavaScript. It was actually using an engine... Um, by a developer called underscore discovery is the developer and the engine's called lux l-u-x-e oh yeah i've seen that around yeah yeah um and that was pretty cool pretty cool engine but yeah both both the picolages are pretty similar in that they're this infinite grid that scrolls forever so it's kind of fun to you know do the math to make it infinitely scroll like that and especially I, i don't think people appreciate how hard it is on mobile devices to get touching to work how you would expect for like pinching and zooming and rotating it. Yeah. You know, it's kind of yeah. tricky. Got to do all this weirdo, uh, like trigonometry math and shit, <laughs> <laughs> but it's just so satisfying to, you know, just drag it and spin it around and everything. Yeah, yeah. So I've yet to try it on mobile, but when I do, I know that's gonna, that's just gonna feel good. Yeah. It's got momentum. That's, yeah. that's one of the things that people don't put in their apps a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Simple very Simple little design things. The feel. The feel is very important. Yeah. And you just whip that up in like the past two weeks? Is that what you said? Like, Yeah. As usual, I waited to the last minute to, <laughs> to get it all, Bill, all together. Bill was like, hey, you got, you got like five months, four months to make this. And then... <laughs> <laughs> and then it's difficult too because, you know, the artists are, you know, fixing up their art and, you know, making sure they all blend together nicer. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm getting newer and newer pieces of art every day. Um, making sure they're all up to date yeah. and shout outs to bill for organizing that and finding all these amazing artists it's really easy to make something cool when you're working with people like that yeah and then at the end of the project he's trying to use all these newgrounds apis that don't work quite right and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm, i guess i'm probably the first person to call the newgrounds api from WebAssembly, <laughs> which is kind of funny oh. <laughs> definitely definitely <laughs> yeah What's funny is he uh, he built the, all these calls to to do the metals and stuff in WebAssembly, uh, but that's not his first time actually working with the API. He wrote in Hacks a program that built the old Flash API libraries for both ActionScript three and two. He would he wrote it once and then it would build for both platforms going way back. Ooh. So there's some like trivia for you. Yeah, back then it was tough because people used so many different versions of Flash, you know, and none of them were compatible with each other you know back then you could if you had flash cs3 you could save down to you know the previous version like flash 8 right but you couldn't save down to flash 7 or flash 6 so we had users that were you know still using flash 5 flash mx and you needed to make the api so they could use it and so i always had like 10 different versions of flash installed so i could (laughs) save all these stupid (laughs) files down um thankfully they they eventually fixed that in flash cs5.5 like I can open a animate CC file on Flash CS 5.5 now. Oh, okay, okay. Um, but yeah, back then it was just kind of a nightmare to make a compatible Flash file. So if you're going to pirate Flash these days, make sure you get CS 5.5. Yeah. That's, what Mike's, that's what Mike's telling you. Official Mike recommendation. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that, that was kind of fun work too, working on the API. You know, get to talk a lot with the different game developers who are trying to use it. Um, sometimes tricky... A, Especially with the flash ads, because you never knew what a flash ad could do, and they would break all the time and use up all your <laughs> CPU. And I had a couple times I had to send some bugs to Adobe because I remember one time a flash ad would basically crash the player. You know, if it was running in the debugger, so all these game developers they would try to use the Newgrounds API and it would just crash. Um, and I had to like disassemble the specific ad that was happening <laughs> with, and I did send the bug report to Adobe. And they fixed it, so shout-outs to them on that one. Shout-outs to Adobe. <laughs> no, they don't get shout-outs. They let Flash die. Fuck Adobe. <laughs> Speaking about Flash dying, let's talk a little bit about Ruffle. Yeah, what is Ruffle? So Ruffle is a Flash emulator written in the Rust programming language. Uh, so that's what it stands for, Ruffle Rust Flash Emulator. 
Um, and it's a project I've been working sort of on and off for a few years now. And basically the idea is, you know, the Flash player is reaching its end of life in 2020. And, you know, what are we going to do with all these Flash animations, you know, not just on Newgrounds, but on all of the sites everywhere. And, you know, there's no reason the web APIs are good enough now that there's no reason that we can't, you know, run those Flash files, you know, using JavaScript, using WebAssembly. Um, and there were a few projects that, you know, tried to do this over the years. You know, uh, there was, there was Shumway, which was a project by Mozilla, you know, a few years ago, but a lot of those, they were more targeted when you needed flash to use YouTube, right. To even use the web. And, you know, these people on Linux, you know, couldn't really use YouTube. Um, the HTML5 but, wasn't like as developed as it is now. Right. And now that HTML5 is big and Flash is dead, you know, there wasn't really a need for that stuff anymore. So Mozilla killed Shumway and, you know, everyone's sort of happy that Flash is going away. But there's still, at least for me, there's all this content that's going to be hard to access, you know, in just a few months time. And it's it's a lot of great content a huge legacy of internet culture uh independent games you know that's Mi mini putt got it yeah yes mini putt yes <laughs> um <laughs> you know you think about it if there's no flash you know there's no alien hominid there's no castle crashers right there's no closure there's no meat boy there's this huge history of you know independent games that you used to be able to just go to a website and play instantly and yeah. you're not going to be able to do that anymore so that was sort of the impetus for me to work on Ruffle. Um, and the other side of it was, you know, it was a way for me to learn the Rust programming language. And my brain is full of all of this flash knowledge that's going to be useless <laughs> in about six months, right? <laughs> so this was sort of my like last trial. Like, what can I do with all of this weirdo flash knowledge that I have? <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah, it's been trucking along pretty good for the past three years and it's actually live on Newgrounds for a small handful of older submissions um if you actually look at alien hominid on Newgrounds, it's running in ruffle right now so you can load it up and play it without the flash player yeah it's making um, it's making a lot of good progress what's the like you know making an emulator for flash what's the how does how does that like happen how does the magic behind that happen with like oh the render this swift and get all this data like you know all the swift spec right mm -hmm. i have it <laughs> i have that that swift spec bookmarks and pretty much open 24 <laughs> 7 um yeah, so, you know, you flash file, you hit control enter in flash and you get an SWF file, right? Yes. And that's, you know, it's just some binary data that's, you know, in some format. And Adobe is nice enough to open up the SWF specs so you can actually, you know, go to Adobe's website, look at this, you know, 200 page PDF that says, okay, here's how the data is laid out in the SWF file. Like, here's the shape data. It says, okay, move the cursor from here to here, draw a line from here to here. You know, here's what the action script looks like. You know, here's the action script opcode to add two numbers. Yeah. So it's just a lot of work to parse that SWF file. You know, when you load Ruffle, it takes in, in an SWF file just like Flash, and it attempts to read it just like Flash. The one thing we're doing that's interesting is we're doing different rendering backends. So, yeah. you know, Flash was always a software renderer, right? It had a really good software vector rendering. And that essentially means it's like running like only on the CPU, right? Yep. Yeah. So that, Okay, yeah. You know, Flash has been around since, you know, the 90s. So that was before 3D video cards even really existed. Yeah. So How you know, dare you, sir? How dare you pretend the Voodoo FX wasn't a thing? <laughs> <laughs> Erasing history, Mike. <laughs> well, it's, it's kind of interesting because I do think it, we can get into this more, but I think one of the failures of Flash is that they didn't embrace the GPU enough, the graphics card enough. Um, but anyways, in, in Ruffle... You know, we have different renderers. We have one rendering backend. If it's running in a web page, it'll use the HTML5 canvas and just draw shapes to the canvas. Um, and that just uses whatever the browser uses to draw shapes. Um, but we just added new rendering that uses WebGL to use your video card to render it. So it's hardware accelerated, nice and fast. Um, and yeah, we'll continue to experiment with that with different renderers. I think there's different things to try to, you know, help the flash run as fast as possible look as cool as possible yeah yeah as faithful as possible like to the you know og swift whatever the well, input when, you're, when you're talking about og swift though what's funny 
Um, I don't know, Cam, if you... What, what version of Flash was the first one you worked in? <laughs> I was messing around in, like, CS5 or something. CS5, yeah. So you're, like, pretty much ActionScript 3 and on. Yeah, um, yeah. If you If you go back to, like, the really old Flash, you know, there was, like... There's like two versions of Action Script One for the most part before Action Script Two wow. was a thing. Um, <laughs> just just how you would talk to things throughout the display tree. Uh, Mike, you want to tell us about how fun it was to deal with all the different ways people did things and some of the fun uh, contradictions you ran into? Yeah, I mean, so the f- the very first version of Flash that had any sort of scripting support was Flash Three, and you could basically you know tell a movie clip to stop and play. <laughs> that's pretty much it and that that's what that's what pico school was made in yeah, a lot of yeah, people yeah. Don't realize how technically advanced that game was for what was available but anyway yeah there are no variables or anything like that so all of the state in a game like pico school was just movie clips stopping and playing at certain points which is pretty crazy <laughs> um there's an old command called tell target which you would you'd say tell target and then like give it a movie clip name and then you could you know, tell that specific clip to play and stop. And it's funny, like going back and trying to get all of this stuff to work. It's just not documented anywhere on the web because that was before. Like, it's it was like really... archaeology. Isn't yeah. It? <laughs> and actually, you know, when I'm trying to figure out how all of this stuff works, the best source has been like Google Books, like finding a flash for book from the year 1998, you know. <laughs> you should have asked me. I have some of those <laughs> physical books. But yeah, I mean, it's been really interesting to like see all the different phases that Flash has gone through. Like back then, it wasn't even called Action Script; it was just actions, and you couldn't yep. even type into the. There wasn't like a text box where you could type code. It was like a list box, and you had to select the commands. It was like a visual editor almost. You know, it, it's been interesting because you know at the Behemoth, uh, Alien Hominid and Castle Crashers are Flash games. We have our own homegrown, yeah. you know, Action Script parser that runs it on the console and on PC and everything. Um, but that's been, you know, very focused on the kind of code that we need, need to run. And it's been a whole different ball game, you know, from just running, you know, Tom fault code to running any arbitrary web content. Right. <laughs> and people do so many different crazy things. Um, and just handling all of that, you know, it's been interesting. It's t- interesting to learn the corner cases, Right. Yeah. So, you know, there are games where, like, the collision detection just doesn't work. You know, they're just accessing undefined things all the time. And the Flash player responds to that in a certain way. And if we don't respond exactly the same way, then it's just not going to work. Yeah, so, yeah. So, you know, all of those things like, okay, what happens if I set the X position to undefined? You know, what happens if I set the X position to negative a billion? Like, how does it wrap around? Yeah. You know, like, figuring out all of those things is... You know, tedious work, but it's kind of fun in a way to like poke at the system and see what happens. To test, do you just wait for bug reports to come in, or do you like go through games and test them, or like a like how do you go about testing different coding things and how they everything works together? How did you how that happen? Um, it's a little bit of everything, really. So you know, obviously, uh, there's the content I grew up with, right? The content I like to to play with. So you know, I took Mini Putt, I took Pico School through it in a ruffle and, you know, see what happens, see what breaks. Yeah. And then, you know, when something breaks, uh, the other hard part is we don't have the source code a lot. At least, uh, actually, Tom's nice enough to send me the source code. He has all this old source code from Pico School and stuff. So if I ask him, he'll send me. But a lot of times I don't have access to the original source code. Yeah. So I have to do a lot of debugging. We have some debuggability in Ruffle. Like I can look at the, the commands that it's trying to run. Or I can decompile the SWF, and uh, there's a nice SWF decompiler now called uh, JPEXS Flash Decompiler, free Flash Decompiler. So that's been really helpful to use that software to actually like look at the guts of the Flash file. And then from there, it's, you know, if there's something specific feature I'm trying to get working, I'll just make a, a test file in Flash. Um, like when I was trying to get Teltarget to work, I would do Teltarget and then try all of these different variations of things to see what it did and it's been good too especially as we've gotten some contributors uh shout outs to the contributors that are helping me out um you know each person has like a different 
the set of content that they're into that they're trying to get working. So uh, there's one contributor who's working a lot on Homestar Runner, you know, getting all the Homestar Runner stuff to work. You know, one contributor that's, you know, working a lot on the object oriented stuff in ActionScript 2, and that's been helpful. So, you know, everyone has their piece of content that they want to keep working. So it's helpful to have lots of people trying stuff because otherwise you're never going to get everything. So based on um, how far along Ruffle is right now, what's the best version of Flash to pirate if you want to make a Ruffle game right now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, probably an older version, you know, pre-CS5, ActionScript 2. We don't have any ActionScript 3 support yet. That's uh, hopefully coming down the pipe. Uh, I have one contributor who's been working on that. Shout outs to him. But yeah, I mean, it's it's a huge undertaking. And that's why... I'm kind of thankful that people were helping because I'm not smart enough to do it on my own, right? <laughs> and the amount of work there is to do is pretty huge. But I think we've got to sort of a good momentum now where a lot of it seems possible to me. Um, yeah. Particularly ActionScript 2, like I can see the light at the end of the tunnel there. You know, ActionScript 3 will be a whole new ball game, but we'll take that one step at a time. And I, I think we'll... We'll do good there. Yeah. Yeah, it's been making a lot of like good progress. It seems like every it seems like, oh wait, Alien Hominid is like, you know, this thing's glitched and then like, you know, a few weeks later it's like, oh yeah, Alien Hominid is like perfectly playable. It's like <laughs> you know, it's it's making very cool progress. Cool watching all the shit happen, all the commits and shit go through the GitHub. And that's all that's all open source, baby. Yeah, it's all on GitHub if anyone wants to check it out github.com slash ruffle dash rs yes yes open source and what's the uh is this like your first kind of i guess big project that you've been like the project lead for of like an open source project yeah it's been a learning experience for me i mean i've contributed to open source before but this is the first time that i've been sort of a lead maintainer of a big project which you know sort of came out of nowhere a little bit i wasn't really expecting it, but it, it's been fun, and all the contrib contributors have been really nice and helpful. Have people have done a lot of good good work. Um, it was sort of funny because you know I was just sort of working on it on my own, and you know I would show Tom once in a while, but it was sort of you know I had it secret, like private it on GitHub, yeah. and then you know I showed it off at a Rust programming language meetup, and someone there tweeted it, put it on Twitter, and then from that tweet. The official Rust programming Twitter retweeted it, and then it was on Hacker News and all of this stuff. <laughs> yeah. And so I was kind of like freaking out because it's like, oh my gosh, all these people are looking at my terrible code. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I, I saw it in PC Gamer. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I mean, it's it's nice to have that push sometimes because you know if that wouldn't have happened, it might still just be private on GitHub with no one else working on it. So. Yeah. And shows how much people love Flash still, and they want it to succeed. So, I mean, you've got a lot of people that are rooting for you. Absolutely. It was kind of funny because I was, when it started to go viral a little bit, I was literally at a bachelor party, and <laughs> <laughs> and I had all these, like I had all these people in the Discord channel, like you know, trying to set it up, and, and I'm here at a bachelor party on my my laptop, <laughs> trying to fix it all. But yeah, it's been good. Uh, it's been making good progress. Uh, lots of good work being done, and I hope it See, continues. Man, man, good old Ruffle, good old Ruffle. You're saving. You know, you're the Flash Man, Mike. <laughs> he he really is too, because like his other big project he he did was Swivel, which yeah. you know that that was when we started supporting video, and he's like, well, let's get Flash working on video so we can save that shit. Like, Mike is the Noah of Flash. <laughs> I, I don't know about that, but. I mean, Swivel is mainly because I was tired of all of these animators asking me how to get their flesh in the video. You know? <laughs> it's kind of crazy to think about, but, you know, Flash, for the longest time, it just couldn't export a video, you know? I mean, it could, but it would it would just Not be garbage. Not very well, yeah. It would be, like, huge file size, it would be corrupted, it would drop frames, the sound would be out. It was just terrible. You might only um, get the top timeline, no movie clips. Right. And, you know... We would be in the Adobe uh, beta forums, you know, you know, Adobe was nice enough to like help us, let us beta test some of their newer versions. And I just remember it would be like Adam Phillips in the Adobe beta forums, just like begging, begging them to, 
have a good video exporter for versions and versions. Um, and it, it just d didn't happen. It just, it was just terrible. And yeah, all of these animators would be like, oh man, I just, you know, can't get this in the video. And TV shows were made in Flash and they, I, you know, Jeff could tell you, Johnny Utah could tell you stories about, he used to work on that show on VH1 that was made in Flash and how they had to get that in the video by like exporting a whole, a billion PNGs and stuff like that. Oh um, shit. <laughs> And so eventually I was like, okay, I'm just going to sit down and figure out how to do this. Because the other thing was there were lots of commercial video exporters, like Flash to video converters, but they all costed money and they were all just as terrible, right? Yeah. <laughs> so like they would just like record your screen so it would drop frames or it would be like you had to like plug your microphone into your speaker input to get the sound or, you know, weird stuff <laughs> like that. And... And I, I could see a path to where, you know, we could do that using Flash itself. You know, Flash has a bitmap data uh, class where you could just draw the frame to a bitmap data. And I'm like, well, I could just do that each frame and, you know, turn that into a video without dropping frames, right? So that's what where I sort of started from there. And, you know, there were some beta versions of Swivel floating around. And originally I made it in uh, Flex, Adobe Flex Builder. Yeah. Um, and you know, I wrote all the code to parse the SWFs and, um, yeah, basically we just draw the bitmap, draw the, the frame to a bitmap and then pipe all those frames to FFmpeg, which is a video encoder. Right. And that's how you get a nice small H.264 video file that worked great. But then it was like the series of things that I wasn't sure I was going to be able to solve. Right. So I had the video, but I had no clue how to get the audio. Yeah. And that was a problem for a long time because um, you don't want to do what all these other encoder apps do and like just try to record the like the loopback audio. It, it would be all out of sync and all. Yeah, it was a problem. Um, so what I ended up doing was I modified the code in the SWF file to log whenever a sound would play. Right. So if I had an event sound on the timeline in Flash, it would mm. basically log like, okay, play this sound at this frame. If it was a streaming sound, it would say, okay, it's playing the sound. It's still playing. It's still playing. It's still playing. Yeah. And then I would take that log of sound events at the end of the video encoding and mix the audio track by hand using, not by hand, but by code. I would mix the <laughs> audio. I'm not there in Audacity dragging sounds around, but the code would look at that log of events to, you know, mix the audio track. And that, gave me perfect sync and yeah that's how the sound got there and so that was a fun project and it was really satisfying to actually help people there are still people to this day that, that use swivel um i yeah, know animation yeah. studios use it um i'm a little bummed i haven't really kept up to date keeping it up to date uh but it's open source on github and if anyone wants to uh take maintainership over it i'd be happy yeah. to mentor with that yeah it's written in hacks if anyone knows hacks, that's a open call. There's the there's that dang bug with the camera in Adobe Animate. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to fix that. That's been that's been around for a while. <laughs> yeah, I know. Particularly with the newer versions, it hasn't kept up with the features that Adobe added. So yeah, yeah, like, it would be nice to fix those. Adobe is still adding features onto Adobe Animate, but still exporting as Swift. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that's that's a question for me too. Like, I don't know if Adobe is just gonna ditch the Swift format at some point. You know, the Flash player is gonna die, right? Yeah. But, you know, the Flash format's obviously gonna stick around. There's Adobe Animate, and that saves a, a Flash file. But I don't know if they're gonna keep going on with the SWF viewer, the SWF format, or if they're gonna go away from that at some point. Yeah, yeah. So that'll be interesting. It's all gonna go FLV. Baby. <laughs> you gotta make a new swivel <laughs> another interesting uh, problem for swivel was the filter effects in flash like you can make a blur filter or whatever mm, yeah. and i remember specifically stamper had one of his bite-sized cartoons with the fish which had like the underwater background and that background was just like some blue lines with a 500 pixel blur filter or whatever but you know a blur filter at 800 by 600 versus a blur filter at 1080p if you have the same uh, same blur size, it doesn't look right. Yeah. So, you know, that was another problem that I had to go in and find all of the filters and scale them up for 1080p to make it look correctly. 
Yeah. So, yeah, all these little problems would crop up that, you know, took some effort to fix to make the best video possible. Is that, is that, is that similar to uh, the process of Ruffle where it's like, oh, hey, here's this flash file. This specific thing isn't working. And then they like, you know, all the beta testers for like Swivel or whatever would like send you it and be like, oh, hey, let me dig into this and see why, you know, this movie clip isn't working. Is it shit like that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, like right now on Ruffle, the filters and blend modes don't work. So what we'll probably do is, you know, make a bunch of test files with filters in them and start digging into that and get that working. So let me ask you this. Um, obviously, you've acquired so much knowledge about Flash and how it works <laughs> and all that. Uh, were you like a, like really into Flash before you got pulled into this or did you get pulled into this, you know, more professionally and just kind of built your love of flash because you got pulled into it like how did that all come about um a little of of both i mean i, w I was definitely into flash before uh i worked at newgrounds and actually when i applied to newgrounds i sent i sent tom like a bunch of little flash demos i was working on and you know the sort of the appeal to flash was you know back then this was before all of these game frameworks that we are so blessed with now even existed like there was no unity you know there was no hacks flixel there was no godot so it was actually very difficult to get something on the screen and flash kind of solved that you know it was very easy to just open the software and draw something and with 10 lines of code have it moving around with the keyboard you know because otherwise you were sort of stuck using like c plus plus and have to write quite a bit of dense code to even just get a window to appear so flash was sort of nice in that way and that's that's why it was sort of a, the boom for the indie game market at that point um, so yeah, I, I started doing a lot with Flash, you know, probably I started in the 2000s, you know, with Flash 4 and Flash 5. By the way, in Flash 5, you still couldn't type into the code text box by default. You had to, <laughs> you had to manually go in the options to switch it from normal mode to expert mode, they called it. And then you could, yep. you could type the code into the text box. Um, and yeah, from there, I was always, you know trying to push the limits of what flash could kind of do and that's what sort of appealed to flash to me as well is that it was pretty limited you know at that point in time but just seeing something moving on a web page was amazing and yeah taking this sort of limited set of things you could do like how can you explore that space has always been really interesting to me like i always think that restriction breeds creativity like now that flash or any html5 can do anything it's you know it's kind of boring right but back then when it was just difficult to even get something moving it was like really exciting to do something that no one else has done so going from that you got a job at newgrounds um what, what were the what was the timeline from you like just working at newgrounds to like boom you're working on this compiler for console games to like what you're doing today <laughs> so yeah I, I got hired in newgrounds uh i guess 2006 and i wasn't even sure what i was going to be working on at first when i was hired um, but i ended up pretty much going directly into working on castle crashers i think castle crashers was maybe two months in development at that point or a few months and so that was you know, a big leap. You know, I, I actually had an internship lined up at IBM at the time Whoa. that Newgrounds hired me. So it's kind of funny to like think about how my life would have been different. <laughs> <You know? laughs> we wouldn't have Swivel. Flash would have died for real. It would have. It really would have. <laughs> Suck at IBM. <laughs> but uh, ended up working on Castle Crashers, and that was a you know a neat learning experience. You know, jumping right into the Flash parser that was you know running this code on the console which is really yeah. interesting. Um, and that's where I sort of learned all of this emulation work or how to, you know, parse these files. And it was the same kind of thing. Like we would have, Tom would write some code and it wouldn't work on the console. It would work in flash and I would have to dig in and figure out, you know, what was wrong, why it didn't work and, you know, fix it. And yeah, so we, I worked on castle crashers and then castle Cra crashers shipped in 2008 and then from there, I, I transitioned more to uh, like new grounds work, like the API. I worked on a lot with Josh, who did a great great job on that. Yeah, he's um, great. <laughs> and yeah, like the new grounds audio visualizer, um, the new grounds video player, the original one. I did work on that as well. And lots of new grounds games, I sort of have my hand in like secretly. You know, yeah. lots of Tom's games. There are little things I've done here and there are. Uh, like people would ask me for API help and I would, you know, do things here and there for them. So yeah, that, that was, 
had my hand in a lot of different things at Newgrounds, and that was a fun time. Carrot clock. What, what was that? Carrot clock 3D thing. What, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that sort of goes back to, you know, the restriction in Flash that, you know, back before you could do anything. So yeah. that was just for a clock day. You know, I was playing around with doing software rasterizing in Flash, which is basically, yeah. you know, at this point we actually had uh, 3D video cards, right? And it could render things in 3D, but you couldn't use that in Flash. So I'm, you know, sitting there plotting the pixels by hand to render stuff in 3D, you know, just playing around. And that was fun. So we made that little care clock thing for clock day one day, one year. And then you go from that to getting doomed to work. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that was interesting. So I, I do a lot of these projects where I'm, I'm like sort of reverse engineering, you know, some existing code base. And that's, yeah. it's really exciting because, you know, you start with nothing working and then you like fix one thing and then the game starts to come alive. Right. Like I remember working on Doom and then, oh, suddenly I see the title screen. Right. And do yeah. a little bit more work. And, oh, I can actually like get into the game. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, the Doom thing was because Adobe released a technology called um, Alchemy at the time that basically yes. cross compiled C code to Action Script. Yeah. Um, and that was the beginning of like the LLVM era of like cross compiling things from one thing to another. Um, and that was fun. I think I get a little bit too much credit for that because that's just like taking someone else's code and like I didn't do anything fancy there. But that at the time though, at the time, it's like doom on new grounds. <laughs> you know, it's right. Yeah. <laughs> it was cool. Yeah, it was fun. So so you just you just plugged plugged the doom code into dang little program and then spit out a swift. Is that what you're telling us? Your fraud, Mike? Is that? Uh, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. I mean, th there was a lot of work there to like hook up the the video. Like basically, Doom would just give you an array of pixels, right? And I would have to take those pixels and put that into like a flash bitmap data. And like doing the work, like okay, this sound wants to play. I have to hook that into the dynamic sound stuff in Flash, and all of that was pretty brand new at the time. Uh, being able to even you know generate sound in Flash and yeah. that kind of thing, and that's sort of what like led to the Newgrounds audio visualizer too. Was just exploring these new features that Flash was adding. Seems like you dig into all the new shit in Flash. I saw on your on one of your what's it called news posts, you you made this like ray tracer in flash or whatever <laughs> like what's was that complicated how's the, i don't know any of these fancy things so is that crazy complicated or what what was that uh, yeah i think again it was just a new feature in flash at the time they had this thing called pixel bender which were kind of like you know what we have what we call shaders you know nowadays when you're doing 3d stuff but it was yeah. You know, it's crazy to think about all these features that were in Flash for, like, basically, like, they focused on it for a version or two and then just stopped caring about it. So, <laughs> and it, it's hard to think about now because it's all this stuff I'm going to have to worry about for Ruffle. Like, there are probably very few things that need Pixel Bender, but I'm going to have to get it to work someday, right? Yeah, when, they, <laughs> and when, when you find them, when the one two-star submission that used Pixel Bending comes up. Yeah. Well, uh, notably, uh, the game Closure, the Flash version, uses Pixel Bender oh, for yeah, the, okay. the lighting effects. So, yeah, got to get it working for that, for Tyler. Yeah, okay, okay. But, yeah, there's, you know, it's, it's funny to look back at all of these crazy features that Flash, you know, it's a 25-year-old technology that just piled on. And, you know... The, like they called it the postcards in space where you can do a faux 3d effect on a movie clip. Yeah. You know, <laughs> they had the, the pixel bender stuff for two versions of flash. They had special text fields called TLF text fields, you know, that they just deleted in later versions of flash, but I still have to worry about it. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> when you're uh, done ruffle, are you going to be like glad you never have to fucking touch flash again? Yeah, I guess you still got behemoth, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I joke. I'll be programming flash stuff till the day I die, which is yeah. <laughs> kind of funny. Yeah. I mean, that's part of why I'm exploring like the rust programming language too, is to sort of get away from that stuff a little bit, but yeah, it'll always be there haunting me. I don't know if we, we asked this, but how'd you, how'd you get into programming? How'd that all, uh, I just always did it <laughs> yeah. like was it in school did you have a computer at home or what like when i was growing up the first computer we had was uh the commodore 64 yeah, which yeah you know it was already old by the time i had it it was a hand-me-down from my uncle um but you know just 
they used to have these magazines that you know were also hand-me-downs from my uncle that had program listings in them and you would type in the program listing and it would just be like a little game like hangman yeah and that's how i started this i would type in these programs and then you know change one thing and see what happened right yeah, like oh yeah. change the color of the screen right that's you know starting on a commodore like back then you couldn't even use the computer basically without pro programming it so uh that's how i started and then from there you know i i did a lot of um i got went to the pc and by that point there was already you know flash started to come around probably in like 98 99 yeah and i remember the the first site i went to that i, th I think it was actually a director uh shockwave file was the the website for the movie independence day <laughs> so yes yes <laughs> like you would go to this website and it would have this creepy music playing with like an animated countdown and i don't know when that movie came out like 96 97 <laughs> but i remember like that blew my mind at the time and i think from there you know they used to have these like little web rings where like oh your site one you know website of the day or whatever and you would put the little icon on your website yeah i think from there like <laughs> i found like the shockwave site of the day and one of those was like newgrounds and that's whoa. how I found my way to Newgrounds, probably around 98, 99. Whoa, whoa. Um, Did you ever see that old uh, that GaboCore website? That shit blew my mind back in the day. You'll have to show me that one. I can't remember that one. <laughs> I got to see. Uh, it was this guy just made, like, it was just an interface. It was like a portfolio, basically, but it was all interactive and just sh it, the whole screen moved. It was the first time you ever saw anything like it. <laughs> I mean, that's another reason why I want to make Ruffle is there's lots of these old websites that were, you know, really crazy and cool to look at. And they're just going to be lost, you know, if you don't if you don't do something to save them. Right. Uh, there's another project called Flashpoint that has done a really good job of archiving, you know, all of the web games on the web. Yeah. Um, so shout outs to them. And they've been help helpful for me testing as well. Um, and so that's great. I. I know for sure that the content, the data will still exist, but the part that Ruffle's doing is making sure it's easily accessible, right? Yeah. That I'll be able to run it on, you know, Windows 11, you know, Windows 12, Mac OS, whatever, without yeah. when the Flash player stops working. Yeah. It, pro it probably won't work on the next Apple. It probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got to learn a lot about how you got into programming, your history with Flash. Let's get to know Mike the man. Uh, Cam, Cam's got a whole tome. Cam's got a whole tome about the stuff you're into. Uh -oh. I, I've had an inside source. I don't know how legit all this info is, but uh, <laughs> uh, let me just say, you, what what can you tell me about a uh, curling team? Is this a thing, Mike? A <laughs> curling team? Were you on a curling team? Yeah, I was in the Philadelphia curling club. <laughs> Played a lot of curling back then. Um, yeah. Fortunately, since I moved out here to San Diego, I haven't done it in a few years um, oh so you still keep up with it or try to or whatever right yeah I'll, I'll watch it when it's on i wouldn't say i'm like super into it anymore but it was <laughs> i'll tell you it was, it was a it was a workout and it was a lot of fun um and very frustrating <laughs> those people in the olympics make it look really easy but yeah it's not easy you know what else i hear is hard and and according to cam's uh, research you you can ride a unicycle yeah, unicycle, huh? <laughs> yeah. Actually, uh, I finally got my unicycle back from Stamper not too long ago because <laughs> it was, like, sitting in his house in Philly for the longest time. Um, Tyra needs some air, so I'm probably a little bit rusty. but Rusty, rust. It's... <laughs> oh! <laughs> it all That's comes the full joke. Circle. That's the single joke for this episode, guys. Uh... <laughs> Are you going to get good enough that you could do like a real world version of uh, Uniracers? Anybody remember Uniracers on the Super <laughs> Nintendo? Solid game. <laughs> Let's see. There's that. That uh, And this one, this one's not so hidden, but uh, you're into pinball, right, Mike? Yep. Probably over the past four or five years, I got into it. And, oh, okay. Um, you know, like a lot of people that are probably listening, I was more, you know, I was into video games growing up. You know, I played a lot of video games. But never really, you know, I played pinball here and there in the arcades, but never really, you know, cared about it. And then maybe four four years ago, uh, I went to a pinball festival with my cousin when I was visiting my cousin. And that really, it, it sort of made me realize, like, how cool they were. It was this whole world of games that I never even thought about or realized was there. You know, yeah. you, know you play enough video games, they're all kind of the same, right? 
but here was this whole new machine, this world of history of machines that, you know, is totally new and totally and interesting. And the physics engine. Oh, the physics engine yeah, on it was for amazing. Sure. And yeah, that's like the fun thing is it's, you know, phys- it's a physical object that you're interacting with. You know, yeah. I, I also play a lot of Street Fighter. We used to play a lot of Street Fighter at the Newgrounds office, but Street Fighter is very digital, right? You do the same thing, the same thing happens each time. Um, but pinball, like you never know what's going to happen and sort of dealing with that chaos is like the interesting element. Yeah. Um, yeah. How, how supple is your wrist right now? Cause <laughs> well, unfortunately I haven't been able to, haven't been able to play because of all the stuff going on. It's kind of a bummer, but I do have some pinball calluses. It does. It takes a toll <laughs> on your, it takes a toll <laughs> on your hands. This dude knows how to tilt. Yeah. You know, I don't consider my, I'm not a game designer by any sense, but I think pinball has taught me a lot about game design. That's been really interesting because it's like, it's basically been the same for 50 years, 60 years. You know, you got some flippers, some slingshots, a ball, yeah. a plunger, but how do you take that limited vocabulary and make something new and in- interesting with it? I think is really cool. Yeah. All the different wacky tables and rails and shit like that. And like, mm-hmm. Make him all unique. Yeah, yeah. And having object uh, objectives in a pinball game, that's like, that yeah, takes yeah. some design. Because how, how, how much can you really do just hitting a button and hitting a ball? But then they set up the tables where there's different scoring mechanisms, different things you can unlock. I mean, it's it's cool. And it's all yeah, like analog. Um, I, a lot of people don't realize how much there is to a modern pinball game. You know, you play the Hobbit pinball machine, you're playing through the plot of the whole three movies right there were goals to <laughs> yeah. do there are skill it's a game of skill there are lots of skills involved they, sh- they should have just made the pinball table as the movie really <laughs> 3d space cadet on the windows xp good or bad good or bad table you know honestly i haven't played it since i got into pinball so it'd be interesting Ooh. to go back and <laughs> you're not a real fan mike you're not a real, real fan pinball, real pinball fans <laughs> I don't know. Poser. in general all of the video pinball it's just not the same oh okay i see I think like one interesting thing is that in real life in pinball, there are moves that are faster than like one frame at 60 frames a second. Like there's a yeah. move called a tap pass and I, that's faster than like a one frame link in Street Fighter. So all of these video pinball games that run at like 60 frames a second, they just can't, they don't have the precision to emulate those kind of moves. And that's yeah. sort of what I'm talking about when it's so physical. Right? Yeah, yeah. PlayStation 5 can do it, I bet you. It, yeah, it's just, got just super wait. realism. 44 hertz, <laughs> come on. <laughs> one last one last mic lore. One last piece of mic lore. Uh, what's up with the... What's the what's the story with your spine, Mike? The, <laughs> my spine? Uh, I, is it true you're a cyborg? Yeah, is it true? Yes, is it? I am more machine than man. Um, I had scoliosis pretty bad growing up. And ended up having to get surgery for it when I was 16, I guess. Okay. Uh, yeah. I have a pretty gnarly scar, but so far so good. It's been okay since then. You've got a robo spine. Is yeah. That... <laughs> Big old piece of metal. Well, Stamper drew a pretty funny caric- caricature of me <laughs> with the metal spine. <laughs> I'll have to dig that up. Yeah. <laughs> I was told that was. That's the. So if you see artwork of mike as a robot it's because he is in fact a robot yeah that's why he can actually play street fighter and know exactly which frame out of 60 frames per second to fucking throw a hadouken because yeah he's, he's a machine <laughs> and he's faster than 60 frames that's why he can play pinball yeah I'm, i'd keep your eye on him be suspicious yeah. <laughs> he could be our mechanical overlord one day which i'm, I'm okay with if, if mike's going to be the one that starts the robot apocalypse i'm okay with it yeah, I think so. Are you saving Flash? I mean, Will I be in pods hooked up to fucking <laughs> early 2000s Newgrounds Flash games? I, I can want my consciousness that. into an SWF file. Like, <laughs> please, Mike. <laughs> well, sweet. Man, Mike, we uh, appreciate you coming on the show big time. Um, been a lot of fun talking to you. Um, going back to Ruffle, though, you you got that's all open source. How can people support that project? So there's uh, a sponsorship page on GitHub. You can go to uh the Ruffle page on GitHub, and there's a link there to sponsor and support the project. That helps me spend more time on it, you know, make sure it gets up the snuff. It also helps out any contributors. I'd be sure, I'm sure to spread the love to them. And yeah, that, you can help me out. You can also just test things, test things on new grounds that are running in Ruffle. There's a way to play any Flash submission in Ruffle. Uh, maybe we'll share that. And you can just test your favorite game, test your favorite content, and see how it works. 
you know, yeah. chances are it'll break. <laughs> and yeah. then you can file a bug report on the GitHub, and that's very, very helpful. Um, yeah. What about the uh, Ruffle Discord? Are we plugging that? Yeah, we, we also have a, a Discord that you can find the link on the GitHub. Um, you can stop in and say, like, hey, I tried the, this, that, the other thing. It didn't work. And, you know, like I said, I just need lots of eyes. Yeah, I'm not smart yeah, enough yeah. to do it to do it on my own and having lots of people trying things out it's really helpful hells yeah make sure you uh support this project because the more support we get the more the uh, old school flash and modern flash will be able to play sooner than later because they're pulling the plug this year guys so get get that money get that money to mike get that money in mike's pocket come on he needs the coin he needs the coin and then flash will be saved that's right and you will have saved it with your donate we're turning this into a fucking telethon here <laughs> we, need, we need some Jerry Lewis. Where is he? <laughs> but yeah, support, support it, support it all. Support, 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 and support Newgrounds while you're at it. <laughs> yeah, support Newgrounds as well. <laughs> well, sweet. Well, damn man, thanks for coming on. It's been yes. too damn long since we talked, brother. We'll have to for sure. get together again. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you got anything else, Cam? Let's see. Uh, 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 Michael R. Welsh, thank you for coming on the this uh broadcast this has been uh ngp with michael r welsh that's uh, that that was my final piece of research that his middle name starts with r <laughs> it's ruffle yeah the r stands for ruffle that that's it that's the <laughs> everybody wants to go home uh appreciate uh water flame letting us uh, use a song for our podcast here and we will see you all next time bye-bye